Well, it's finally that time, my favorite time of the year, autumn, and then obviously Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, a lot of beautiful colors to work with. And today we're gonna begin, we're gonna start it off with our Red Barn. Um, it's actually a request that many of you have made and we're finally delivering. We're sticking with a very traditional look and uh, we're just gonna jump right in here. And as you can see in front of me, I've already sort of started laying some things out. I just wanna discuss a few things. Now, obviously, uh, well, here is the, the base of the face of our barn. And we have a series of panels. And in this case, we did it in the traditional red. And I also went around, hit it with a little bit of ink just to kind of distress the edges. And we've got this sort of irregular looking um, striped uh, embossing folder that we used. I believe this is by Doris. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to start off by simply applying our panels. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you could probably just take a look at the various photos, but we're going to walk you through it anyway and kind of talk about some other things as well. So again, you'll want to take a look and just decide if you're going to ink. I would recommend it because barns are typically little rustic and weathered and I think it's really appropriate and much like Halloween it's a time to get a little sloppy with the inking because it adds to the rusticness if that's even a word uh, you'll notice on the bottom here in this section here that there are a series of markers to help you with the placement of these panels now also you want to obviously make sure that you for this one get it lined up nicely with that little star cut out because we are going to uh, well, there's going to be some vellum involved in this project as well, and we're going to put that on before we assemble anything as well. So we've got a little bit of pre-prep to do, nothing major. It's a very straightforward project, I'd say. And again, just using that those little markers there to help you with the alignment. So we'll get that into place, just like that. Okay, so essentially, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna focus on this one side here first, get all this in place, and then just kind of move on to the next section, and so on and so forth. Now, this section here, the front, obviously, we have this panel here. Okay, and you can tell which one it is by the little horseshoe on the front there. Now we also have this little ring that goes around that top window up there. So we wanna get that in place. I'm just using a series of little dots and that is gonna be flush up against the inner cutout there. So you wanna make sure you just line that up with the inner cutout. There we go. Great, I'll grab this piece here. And this one, obviously, if you get it lined up correctly with a little horseshoe, that should, well, the rest of it should fall into place. So that is gonna be your guide for this piece. So just pop that right onto the little horseshoe. Pardon my head here for a second. There are also little indicators here on the bottom to help you with the placement, should you need that. Okay, just moving right along. And, you know, sometimes, well, typically, depending on the embossing folder, now with this embossing folder, there's going to be areas where you apply the glue and it's really not going to do much because it's, well, some areas are raised and some are not. So just try to focus on the areas that actually have, well, that are, that are not raised. Those are the only ones that are really going to, grab the glue. Okay, we've got a series of windows here. Now we cut this out of an AC vanilla color. So let's get that on there. Yeah, so there's a lot of paper piecing here, but that's okay. It's kind of fun. It's like we're, uh, we're buying a prefabricated barn 
we're doing the the work and then towards the end there we're just gonna just raise the raise the sides and get them all together and before you know it we have a beautiful beautiful barn now this doubles as not only a luminary but box as well so if you want to give a gift in a really really cool way that's how you do it and then once you know once they receive their gift they can obviously keep this um, in their home okay so now this part is this part's a little a little weird here but we're going to do this one step at a time here we've got four pieces that look like this and then we've got four pieces that just don't have the little X inside of them. So first thing we need to do is just line them up and make sure that they match. Because if we take this top and put it on this, well, that one worked actually. But let me show you an example of where it wouldn't work. You can see that this piece is larger. And obviously, we don't want to do that. We're going to need to put that one on this piece here. Nope, and that doesn't work either. And that doesn't work either. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just make sure you find the right piece. Now this is simply just to kind of give it a layered effect. Okay, so find the corresponding pieces. I think it's this one. Just lay them on top of each other and then we're going to glue this piece without the X onto the piece with the X. Okay, so very simple. Just find the right pieces. Don't accidentally start gluing or applying your glue on this piece and then end up putting it on the wrong section or in the wrong orientation. Make sure that all lines up nicely. We'll do the next one here. And despite the fact that it looks kind of chilly in here, it's really not it's still August. We're trying to get a head start on this stuff. And I should have wore a short sleeve shirt. That or I need to get some LED lights. Darn it. So it doesn't get so hot in here under these lights. But either way, I'm kind of looking forward to the fall crisp air. Although this year is probably going to be a little bit different than years past. But as always, we'll make the best of it. I already actually have some pumpkins that I've harvested. The garden's doing really well. For those of you that are, uh, follow us on Instagram or in our group on Facebook, you probably saw a photo from one of my recent harvests. The garden's doing pretty good this year. I was focusing mostly on the pumpkins, but got a lot of peppers and tomatoes and kale and lettuces and all that good stuff. Okay, all right, so that is that. Now, you need to, here's what you wanna look at right now. Um, this little section where the, this section here where it's skinnier, those are gonna be facing inward. And then we also have two that are the same size as far as height, and then two that are slightly shorter you can see the difference here that one's these are taller and these are shorter okay and the taller ones are going to go on the bottom with the skinny section facing in we're just going to match that up so this needs to this is going to be flush with the bottom okay and these are actually going to be touching or close to it okay so those are going to go there and then these are going to go up here just like that and should have just a little thin area there in between all of these. <clears throat> and I'm going to back that with some vellum here in just a moment. But anyway, go ahead and get your glue on the back of this piece now that we've got all together. The two layers are together now. Okay, and just want to match that up nicely with the little triangles or the X's, whichever you find easier to focus on. I'm, I'm looking at the actual triangles that are cut out in between the X's there. It's a good 
visual to focus on when putting this thing down. Just kind of take a look at that, that little triangle there. And also, again, make sure that when you're placing this down, that it's nice and flush with the bottom of this section, because this is going to be a lid, actually. So we want this to go all the way down to the bottom of the lid. Okay. And there we go. Yep, and check your check your your work and your placement. It should be a nice straight line here. Okay. And then towards the end, once we get to the part where I'm actually doing some embellishing, um, throw a couple little black dots, either with uh, either with a pearl or a rhinestone or maybe even some liquid pearls, whatever whatever you have handy. Just throw a little, little dot there in the center. Okay, so that is the front of our little barn. That looks great. And we're going to put our little vellum pieces in place here. Okay, now just got to find for our little circle up there. It's going to be a turquoise vellum. Uh, you can see the little horseshoe shape. We've got yellow vellum there. Let me find my other one here. We've got yellow vellum here. Okay, pop that down and just make sure that you don't place it over one of the other cutouts. So don't put it up too high so that it covers up the little circle up at the top. You don't wanna do that. There we go. And horseshoe. Pop that on. There we go. Let me take a look at some here. Yeah, that's fine. Go easy on the glue around the horseshoe here. We don't want any of it spilling into the little cutout area. There we go. Okay. So you can see how nice that looks. Okay. And that pretty much is it for this section here. And if you want, um, I would actually just put this, slip it underneath your mat so that everything dries nice and flat for us. Okay. And we can begin working on our sides. And actually, you know what we can do? Um, well, just do some easy stuff here. Let's grab the, uh, let's grab the back part. This is the back of our barn. You can tell and identify that it's the back because it only has one little cutout for our little window up at the top. And of course, you wanna go ahead and fold everything at your score marks here. So that's, it's all ready to go once we get to that point. Okay, so for the back, we got two pieces that look like this, <clears throat> excuse me. There's the other one. And then we have two pieces that look like this. And then of course we need to find our little ring that goes around the top, the actual window. Let's get that in place. So I'm kind of hoping that, uh, well, just based on the area here, <clears throat> our kids, are going to school, they're doing a hybrid system, unless that changed within the last two days, which seems to be the way that the world is working now. Uh, but yeah, they're, we're living in a small area. Our population is about a thousand. And I think there's a total of 200 kids. They're doing a rotating system. So they'll have maybe 70 kids in the school at any given time. So we're kind of lucky that they get to do two days of school. But my point is, is that because we are in such an isolated place, I'm kind of hoping that, kind of hoping that the pumpkin patches and all that stuff, apple orchards, they stay open. They don't shut down because I know <clears throat> outdoor activities are typically a little bit safer. Okay, so we'll pop that in place and there are little markers here at the bottom to help you with the placement of these sections. So make sure you utilize those. And then same thing down here. 
We do have some little markers and identifiers there to make sure that you get the alignment spot on. Okay, and I am uh, I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on this glue bottle right now. Going very easy on the glue. Every little, every little bit does a lot of work. It carries its, carries its weight more than you would think. Okay, and I'm just kind of adjusting it a little bit just to make sure that we get that nice crisscross there, a nice little cross. Okay, and the last one. And then we've just got one piece of vellum to put in place on this guy. So anyway, uh, I was gonna say, I'm, you could probably, if you want to, you could pause me and just, again, based on, based on how good you guys are at figuring these things out, you could probably figure out where all this stuff goes. If you want to do the pre-piecing without me and you know, listen to something or listen to some music, feel free to do that. I think the next thing that I'm going to start doing is um, I'm going to start putting the panels on the roof so you can kind of catch up with me there if you want, or you can just hang out with me either way. Okay, and our vellum. There we go. All right, so there we have it. Two down. You can put that under your mat, let it flatten out. Okay, so we've got the front and back done. Let's take a look at the sides here. Okay, so we've got this section here. This is kind of what makes up half of the roof. Um, so let's get the little window frames in first. Okay, so let's just get our glue on this piece here. And I did a lot of inking and I actually, as far as my process goes, when I'm filming these videos, I'll kind of do things um, kind of like in a, an assembly line fashion. I'll take and I'll ink all three projects first and then, uh, anyway, when you're putting this down, just use the little cutout for this window as your initial guide for placement. And then take a look at the one on the right as well. Just make sure that's nice and centered and then obviously make sure that that looks good too. This little cutout here. Okay. We've got this little puzzle piece that's going to pop right in there. I also embossed that and inked it. I'll just pop that right in like a little puzzle piece. Make sure it's nice and centered. There we go. And then we have these two sections here. Again, we've got some handy little markers there at the bottom to help you with the placement so that there's less guessing, no stressing, a lot more fun. Okay, so use those guides to get that placed and just pop it right in place. And there we go. You know, the embossing is really, really kind of adds a lot to it. So if you have an embossing machine, absolutely take the time to emboss so that uh, you know, it just makes it look more lifelike, adds some realism to it, a lot more interest. Okay. And again, using those little guides there at the bottom. Now, aside from the guides, you also obviously want to make sure that you have it lined up with the other piece that we already put in place. And you can tell that I'm slightly, slightly high. I'm not high. That's slightly high. That was a Bob Ross joke. Okay. Uh, good. So... That looks great. And we got one more side here. So this is pretty redundant at this point. It's the exact same thing we just did. So it's up to you if you want to hang out and watch. Uh, where is, where is, oh, I got everything. I'm being silly. Okay. So 
I would highly recommend, and I've said this a million times, and you guys are, are, are veterans, are dreaming tree dreamers that have crafted with me time and time again. They are already in the know, and you guys know not to cake on the glue too much because it does more harm than good. So if this is your first time crafting with me, just go easy on the glue. You don't need a whole ton. All right, again, focusing on the left window cutout as a guide for placement. Now scanning over to the right, the right window. And there we go. Perfect. Let's grab our little puzzle piece, pop that into place. You know, and I think that sometimes embossing does some weird things to the paper. Sometimes it stretches it out. Sometimes it cracks it. I definitely have seen it crack and stretch out. I was gonna say maybe it shrinks it, but that doesn't make any sense at all. So uh, definitely doesn't do that. But anyway, back to this piece here. Again, same thing we did on the other side. No difference. There we go. Using the little guides here on the bottom to help me with the initial placement. And that looks good. Perfect. Now sometimes with embossing, if you push down too hard, I feel like it could possibly flatten out the nice texture you have there. So maybe don't push too hard when you're getting that in place. Otherwise it may slightly undo the embossing. I've noticed that before especially for those of you that maybe use a brayer that gives it a lot more pressure. Just be careful with that. And there we go. Perfect. So that window looks straight. It looks straight. Okay. And let's take a look at our roof. I'm going to put our little roof together. And actually, we're just going to put our panels on. Now I took and I hit this with a little bit of a, uh, actually it was Potter's Clay. It's the Memento ink, it's called Potter's Clay. It's like a reddish brown, uh, very nice color. And what we're gonna do, and the first thing you wanna do, you wanna identify these little pieces here that have score marks built into them, okay? And what I did when I ran this through the embossing machine, I stopped the embossing uh, folder right at the score mark so it wouldn't emboss past the score marks. These guys here are gonna go right here and that little fold is actually gonna get glued to the lip of the roof here, okay? So you see how that looks and I did not emboss that. Um, just because I thought that if I did, it may actually crack it and it might just kinda look weird but you can try it either way. Um, so these, these ones here with the little score marks, these are going to go on the bottom sections here where you see the little lip. Okay, so you want to reserve those for these sections here all the way at the bottom of the roof. Okay. And then just throw a nice little line of glue right on that bottom piece. I'm just going to hit that with my finger, spread it out nice and thin. Okay, use the little markers there to help you with the placement, of course. And then, whoops, get that in place and then just kind of pinch the bottom here where that little tiny area is, almost like you're making a pie crust. Just give it a little, little pinch there. Okay, and then grab your next one. We're just gonna go down the row here and get all these little panels in place. Each one has a specific place well, not really. I mean, these you can put this one here, 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 or here, or here, but the rest of these, they'll only fit in one spot. Hopefully that made sense. Okay. Get your glue on there. A nice little line, thin line along the bottom. Maybe spread that out with your finger. And pop that right in place. Now, of course, again, there are little markers there to, to guide you and then give that little bottom part a pinch. Make sure that that all holds nice and snug. There we go. Okay, grab it on the next one here. And I can tell that 
I actually experimented with um, various embossing machines because I know that this, this embossing folder that I'm using here, that I used for this to give us the, the nice little uh, striped look, if I run this through my cuddle bug, it will just destroy the paper. So I had to use my Sizzix Texture Boutique and I just used the two black plates that came with it. And I did not use that little white, sh uh, that white thin piece of plastic to add that extra uh, thickness. Okay, so that looks nice. And everything looks like it's making good contact. So, so far so good. Now this little section here, obviously this guy's gonna go here and this guy's gonna go here and then this guy's gonna go here and we've got that there, that there, that there and then you should have three left over that have the little score marks on those and those are gonna go towards the bottom there. Okay, so that should that should make sense. You're welcome to pause me and then catch up with me uh, during the next step if you want to do this at your own speed. Just look for, I think what I'm gonna start doing next is um, probably gonna assemble the top part of the roof that we're gonna connect to this. So when you see me grab this, that's when you can restart and pick up where where I'm at. Okay. Well, not to get into Halloween talk, but one thing that I am worried about, and it makes sense, obviously, we don't want people getting sick unnecessarily, but um, I think that maybe the haunted house industry is gonna probably suffer a little bit this year. I think maybe uh, you're gonna have to have more of the outdoor ones, which is still cool for those of you that enjoy getting scared and going to haunted houses. And those are probably actually some of my favorite haunted houses, the ones where you're actually outside walking through the woods. I think those could be, could probably still get away with having those during COVID. So we'll see, but it's certainly been an interesting year. And hopefully, hopefully this, this crazy bug goes away soon. Okay, moving right along. And you'll notice that while you're doing it, you may not see it very well on camera here, but there are little indicators and markers to help you with the placement of all these, just to make sure that they're nice and aligned. So definitely use those to your advantage. We try to make things as easy as possible for you. There they are. And then of course, even though we have the little markers, just take a look and make sure that everything lines up nicely relative to the other pieces that we've already glued down. Okay, and there we have that. Nice sturdy roof. It's gonna protect us from the elements. Okay, and let's get our last three pieces here with little score marks put down. There we go. Nice thin line at the bottom. Okay. And pop that guy right in place. Use that marker for your initial placement. And then of course, make sure that it is in fact making contact with this little lip on the roof. And if you need to, you can kind of fold it in a little bit. But I think that looks good. All right, two more. Get that little, that thin little strip folded over. Okay. There we go. And again, use that, use those markers. There we go. All right, one more. 
see how that looks. That looks great. Okay. And the last one. So I've, I've mentioned this. I try to mention it as often as I can, but this is my first time actually putting this together. So I always say, if I can do this my first time around, I know you can do it. The wonderful thing about these pieces is once you kind of understand our system and how things connect and how things work, it's pretty much not a project you can't make. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. All right. So I'm just kind of looking around, inspecting my work, making sure nothing's hanging off. And that looks great, actually. All right. First off, our little, uh, a little wind vane here with our, our rooster. You'll notice that there's two little triangular tabs right on the arrow. It's kind of a weird fold, but you can totally do it. It's gonna end up looking like that when you fold it. Let me fold it back so you can see where they are. See those little triangular tabs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these back to back but we're going to not put glue on the little tabs. So you want to put glue on everything else, but not the tabs. So leave the tabs alone, get your glue on the rest of it. And I'm going to do dots here because I don't want, I don't want a bunch of glue spilling out onto this black piece for some reason, even though this supposedly dries clear, it really, it does leave kind of a glossy sheen, and I don't, I don't want that. Okay, so again, gluing these back to back, right on top of, uh, just kind of mirroring it. Make sure you get it nice and accurately lined up, and then give that a good press. Again, make sure that you did not put glue on little tabs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these tabs to adhere this to this structure, which we're going to put together here in just a second. I just wanted to get our little rooster ready for action. He's got a very important job. And there we go. Okay, that looks great. Okay, so uh, first thing actually that we should do is, you know, let me take a look at something real quick here. This, this brown piece here, actually these tabs, the most, the bottom most tabs here, these two triangular ones, this long one, and these two triangular ones, we are not, we're not going to glue those down to anything. Those are actually going to be used to, we're going to glue, use those to glue that to the roof. But before we do, let's get our little vellum pieces in place here around these little cutouts and all four of these sides are going to have a yellow piece of vellum. Just make sure you get it nice and centered like that. And grab the, ne the next one here. Let me clean off my tip. So as usual, just doing things methodically getting all the individual sections prepped for that final assembly. I guess you could say that that's kind of how they build houses anyway, right? You know, you don't sit there and build a, build a window as you're working on the found, oops. Oh, that would have been a no-no. Yeah. Here we go. that into place. There we have it. Okay. Again, uh, we are going to kind of build the structure. So this little tab here, you want to put some glue on that. Go very easy on the glue. I'm going to use my finger to spread that out. And then we're going to tuck that down and behind its neighbor here. Just make sure you get that nice and accurately lined up. Okay. And just press and hold that down while it sets. Okay, so that first side is together. Now we're just gonna kind of go kitty corner and 
put our glue on the next tab, same exact tab, well, same exact shape, different location. And then we're gonna tuck that right behind this long side, get it nice and lined up, and just press that down and hold until it sets. That looks good. Okay, and then heading on over to the other side. Same thing, same tab. Just like that. There we go. And fold that over, get it nice and aligned, and just press and hold that in place until it sets. Okay. There we go. And that just leaves one more little tab here. Grab our glue, pop it in place. And tuck it right behind. And just hold that until it sets. There we go. Okay, now again, the rest of these tabs, we're gonna leave these alone because we're gonna use these tabs to basically weld or connect this section to the top of our roof. Okay, so we can leave this alone for now. And take a look at this piece here. Okay, and essentially all we're doing here is just building a structure that looks like that. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on these two tabs on the first side here. Okay, and I'm gonna take that glue and spread it out right up to the very edge, make sure that I get it to the corner on both sides. And just fold that over. You can just use your finger on the inside to kind of press that into place. Get that first one in place, that should do it. And then move on over to the other side. Get that nice and aligned. If you need to move some tabs out of the way to help get better access with your fingers, feel free to do that. There's no right or wrong way. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here on these tabs. And actually, you know what? We're gonna need to close this up and that's okay. So let's get glue on the rest of these tabs here, all three. Like that. And spread that glue out. There we go. Fold that in. And then go ahead and close this up. Make sure you get that nice and aligned. And if you need to, you can kind of push from the inside, which is why we left this little hole there to help you get in there. If you can't get your fingers in there, you can use a little dowel. There we go. Okay, structure looks pretty good. Now I've got Got a little area there that's not really making the best contact as far as the glue goes. So sometimes I just create these little strips of scrap paper. I'll throw a little bit of glue right on the tip of that and just literally pop it right between the two areas that aren't playing nice. Paint some glue on there and just press and hold that until it's making good contact. Everything else looks pretty good. Maybe right there could use a little extra TLC. So we'll do that real quick. And that one's gonna need it right on the tip because there's not much area to get in. There we go. Perfect. And I just press and hold that down. Now this little slot, the slit slot, right up at the top, that is where our little rooster's gonna go. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold this up, these little tabs. We're gonna stick the tabs through. Now I kinda, I played with them too much, but they're fine. 
Okay, so you want to put it on all like that. And then we're going to take these tabs and fold them out. Now I'm going to use an X-Acto so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so you can see how I folded those out. So what we're going to do, I'm going to fold them back in so that they're back to back against each other. You can see them there. I'm going to go ahead and put glue on the tabs on both sides. And then we're just going to push them over onto the inside wall, just like that. Okay, so I just kind of push them, and I'm going to use my fingers to really get them to hold that exacto. Isn't really the best. Okay, so essentially we just took those took those tabs and folded them over so that they're glued to the inside of our little roof piece here. So that looks perfect. And now, uh, and actually, you know what? I'm going to do this later. But this is going to go. This is going to go right on top like this. Um, I don't want to mess with this right now. We need to get this onto the roof first so that we don't accidentally crush our little rooster. So put this off to the side as well. Uh, we can put our roof off to the side. And I think we're kind of ready to start working on our base and the main structure here. So getting pretty close here. Okay, so one quick thing that I want to go over. Um, this is the base or the platform for our little barn. And what you'll notice is that, well, we have a set of markers here in the center. And the reason for that is this little piece here. And this is a kind of like a, a support piece. So let's say that you are using this as a gift box and you're putting something somewhat heavy inside. This little piece is just to kind of reinforce the base so it doesn't sag or droop in the center. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how it goes together and I'm actually gonna use it. Um, but if you are using this as a luminary only and planning on just putting one of those little LED um, submersible lights that we use for a lot of our projects, you probably don't need to cut this. You'll find this in the extras folder. It's not going to be a standard cut. Um, but if you want it, look for it in the extras folder because that's where you'll see it. So anyway, we want to obviously we want to fold everything at the score lines and we'll just simply pick a side and we're going to focus on these little tabs here. Let me move this large piece out of the way. Okay, and we're literally just going to take and apply glue to the small tab there and glue it to its neighbor. I think my glue dried up. Boy, you really can't leave these things out for long because they start to just dry up real quick. I've been really good in putting my cap on and everything and uh, I've been a good boy, but I left the studio for what was it, 10 minutes maybe and it's already dried up. So anyway, small tab here, throw a little bit of glue on there. Don't overdo it because otherwise it's going to take forever for it to set. And then grab the, uh, grab the side that's right next to it, fold it over, get it nice and aligned like that. And just press and hold that for just a moment while it sets. So again, you, no one's actually going to see this. Uh, so if you, you fudge up and so no one's actually going to see this part this little structural piece because it's going to be inside of the base. So if you goof up, it's fine. You don't really need to worry about it being aesthetically perfect, but we do want to make sure that we get enough glue on there and that it is structurally sound because like I said, it is going to, uh, it's going to add and provide additional support if you decide that you're going to put something a little bit heavier inside of this box. And again, if you're not using it as a box and it's just a luminary, I, you could skip it. You probably don't even need to use it. Those little submersible, um, 
electronic tea lights, they don't weigh that much, and I don't think it's gonna cause any long-term problems. Okay, so there's one more little tab here. You can see that little tab, and we're gonna pop that right into place right here. And I had way too much glue on there. You can see it's shooting out. It's a telltale sign that I used too much glue. Okay, that's okay though. All right, so now let's fold these tabs in. There should be three of them. We're gonna put glue on all three and I'm not gonna worry about getting the glue out to the very edges. Again, no one's gonna see this. Don't need to worry about clean seams. Just need to make sure that it is structurally stable and that it holds its shape, okay? So go ahead and close it up. And let's make sure that those walls on the side are all nice and intact. And just hold that down for a moment, let it set. You can actually just flip it upside down, let it sit like that for a minute. And now we can move on to the actual base. The base is essentially the same thing, except it's two pieces. And you can see on little markers on here, the outer markers are where the barn's gonna go. The inner markers are for our little support piece. That's where that goes. And, and that be it. So go ahead and get everything folded at the score marks. I'm using my little silhouette um, scraper tool that I usually use for vinyl, kind of using it as my bone folder. It's handy, it does the job. And I like to do this because it loosens up the fibers in the paper, makes things easier to fold. And when you're actually creating 3D structures, it's nice to not have to fight with the tension of the paper. Okay, so yeah, essentially, just like we did last time, we're gonna start with these outer tabs here. Okay, so we've got a little triangular tab on all four sides, all four corners, and we're gonna begin by applying glue to one of them and getting it connected to the side here. And just make sure that you get that nice and lined up and just press and hold that in place for a moment, let it set. Okay, you can see creating just creating a little platform for our cute little barn. Shouldn't take long for it to grab hold, especially if you don't use a ton of glue. Okay, so moving right along to the next little triangular tab. I'm just kind of dabbing it with my finger to tack it up a little bit. And we're gonna slide that right behind this wall and push that tab up against the inside of this this long wall here okay and just keep holding that until that sets okay there we go um, should probably be a little more patient with that and that just leaves two more now obviously before we go and close this up we want to put our little structural piece inside before we put the bottom on Otherwise, we'll have to perform surgery, and we don't want to do that. All right, moving on to the next tab here. We've got two tabs left. Okay. And I'm just going to pop that right behind this wall. However, whatever is the most comfortable for you. And just press and hold that in place. Let it set. And one more, just this guy over here. There we go. Kind of tough to get your finger in there, but that's fine. And close that up. Just pop that right behind this wall, press and hold. Give that some time to set. And actually while we're doing this, I'm gonna multitask here and just throw a little bit of glue right inside of the little four markers. And actually, I could throw a little bit of glue on this. I'm just gonna pop that, whoops, pop that right into place. If it's slightly off, it's not the end of the world. And you can actually kinda of move it around a little bit to spread that glue around. No one's gonna see the inside of this, okay? So there's our, our little support piece. 
nice and in place. Okay, now we've got the base is almost done here. Let me get rid of that glue before it makes a mess. Okay, so we need to throw the bottom on. And what we're going to do, instead of trying to do all four tabs at once, we're going to anchor it on one side first. So get your glue on one of the sides, preferably one of the longer sides. Do a nice thin line. And I'm going to spread that glue out to the very, very edge. There we go. And then take this piece and get that lined up with that tab as accurately as you can, right out to the very edge. I need to kind of nudge the wall in a little bit and press that down, hold it, give it a second. And you can let it pop out and press from the inside to really push that glue into the fibers of the paper. There we go. Nice. Okay. Now we can pull this away. Just kind of fold it out of the way for now. And we're going to apply glue to the remaining three tabs. I'm going a little bit heavier here on the glue because I am planning on working some of this glue out to the very edge of this tab so that everything looks nice and seamless and crisp. Okay, I'm just going to paint that glue to thin it out. There we go. There we go. That little corner looks like maybe I didn't get enough glue on there. We'll see. Okay, and then just close that down and try to align it with the very front, the side opposite of the side that's already hinged, and work on getting that nice and aligned. And then everything else should just kind of snap into place. If you need to kind of push the walls in a little bit, feel free to do so. And this, this part here that we're actually gluing down right now, this is gonna end up being the bottom. So no one's really gonna see this anyway, because the top is already nice and clean since it was already connected. Okay, just kind of keep working your fingers around the perimeter just to make sure that everything holds nicely and that everything is making good contact. And I think I did a pretty good job there I did. Everything looks good. Okay, so we can flip her over. Okay, and there is our base. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put our little grass in place. And there's going to be four pieces, two that are a little bit longer. They're going to go on the sides. And two that are a little bit shorter. They're going to go on the front and the back. The two that are shorter have um, some score marks and some little tabs. Okay, and we're gonna, we're gonna glue that on first. We're gonna glue these two on first, just like that. Now for the front, you can see the letter F indicating that this is the front. You wanna grab this piece that has, um, almost looks like someone actually mowed the lawn there. Uh, you want that part in the front so it doesn't obstruct our little door. And then the one that is shorter but not mowed, that's gonna go in the back, okay? All right, so. Let's get this in place here. And you really only need to put glue on, well, actually, you know what might actually be helpful is if we just put glue on this section because the grass kind of extends beyond this area. So go ahead and just apply your glue to the actual base right on the front there. And then you can literally just take this and pop it right on. Make sure that those tabs go over to the side and it's nice and centered. Okay, just like that. There we go. And just press that down, hold it for a moment. And then we can go over here. We do want to glue this little tab down. Go ahead and just pull that over and glue it down. The reason for that little tab is so that when we put the sides on, it makes it more continuous looking. Uh, so that there's no little brown gap there. Okay, but that looks nice. Now we'll do the same thing on the back here. Let's get the back in place. Go ahead and apply your glue to the base. Make sure you get some glue out to the very edges as well. And then grab this piece, the piece that is not mowed. 
and using the, you can use the tabs to kind of help you center it because obviously they need to be folded over and making contact with this side. And then also just make sure that it's nice and flush with the bo very bottom here of our base structure. And then press that down. That's good. And we'll go over here, put our glue on this little tab, fold that over. And same thing on the other side. Just one little dot. Fold that over. There we go. Now, just a matter of putting the sides on and it doesn't really matter which side you put where, they're both identical. And we're gonna get that nice and centered on there. So go ahead and apply your glue on this whole section here. All the way out to the edge, you may wanna even take your finger and kinda push that glue all the way out to the very, very corners and just pop that right in place. Make sure it's nice and centered and also nice and flush with the base as well. There we go. Beautiful. That looks nice. Okay, and then same thing on the other side. Let's get our glue along this whole structure here. And then a little bit right out to the very corners. Grab your grass and pop that in place. And you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but I did hit this with a little bit of a turquoise color. I had a lot of fun inking this project. It's probably one of my favorite things to do when I'm prepping for these projects. Okay, and there we go. Just make sure everything's making good contact. And the grass is all set, and so is our base. It's ready for, ready for our structure here. Okay, so another thing that is optional, and I'll show you here in a second. I'm gonna grab these pieces here. These are the main structure of our box, and they are also numbered, so you know which order they go in. And you'll notice that those numbers are uh, on the tabs here, this has uh, a Roman numeral three. This has our, our four on it. It's our little custom four. Uh, it's essentially four dashes in the form of a circle, okay? And here is number two, Roman numeral two. And here is number one. Number one has the bottom on it already. It's already built in, okay? So what does that mean? That means that the rest of these pieces here, these are optional. These are optional pieces. These four pieces, and actually these five pieces are optional pieces. And um, if you are using this as a gift box, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put vellum inside of these pieces. And if you want, if you wanna make it look nice, after you get the vellum in there, you can glue this additional piece on here it's a little bit smaller, so it fits inside this area to cover up uh, the vellum so it looks nice and polished inside. Again, if you're just using this as a luminary uh, and a piece of home decor and nobody's gonna be opening it up and you don't wanna waste paper, you do not need to cut these out, okay? These you're gonna find in your extras folder, okay? Um, I'll show you how they work. I don't think I'm gonna use mine because I'm planning on using this as uh, decor. So I don't really need to cut it out. Uh, but anyway, so you'll see here that we have piece number one. We need to find piece number two. Okay, and piece number two is right here. And piece number two is gonna go right here. We're gonna connect it like so, okay with our star over on the right hand side. So let's just, let's just do it, let's get her going. So go ahead and get your glue on tab number one. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little line right out to the edge because I'm gonna pull this glue right out to the very, very edge. Okay, so this is tab number one that we're going to connect to section number two on this side, the side opposite of the tab. 
So I'm just doing this flat right on my work table. You kind of butt it up right up against the score marks. Don't go over. Press that down, give it a second, and then what I do is I'll fold it over onto itself and check my alignment here. This should be flush with the piece that's just behind it. Okay, and that looks a little bit off. I'm gonna give that a nudge. There we go, perfect. Okay, that looks good. Now, we can take and apply our glue onto tab number two. And we're gonna connect tab two to section three. Okay, so we've got everything numbered for you. So it takes the guesswork out of it. Just have to do it in order and you'll be fine. Okay, so grab piece number three, just like we did with piece two. Just lay it right down and just connect those two sections. Okay, so I folded it over onto itself. Everything looks nice and aligned, so we're good there. So we've got one, two, and three all connected. So we're gonna put glue on section three and connect it to section four. Again, section four looks like a Looks like four little dashes in the shape of a circle or a square, whichever it looks like to you. I think it's really supposed to be a, a box or a square. Okay, so we got glue on section or tab three, and here's section four. Just make sure it's nice and aligned. Basically, butting this right up to the score marks without going over. You're like basically halfway on the score mark. I know it's, it's uh, paper thin, it's about as thin as a strand of hair, so if you can visualize getting this piece on half of it, that's kind of what you're aiming for. Okay, so there we have that. Now before we close it up, we do need to put our vellum in place. Okay, so I'm going to start with the little star. For the star, you want this little square yellow vellum. And I am going to just do a few little dots and pop that right in place. There we go. And then, of course, we've got the red. One of these reds is going to go right here. The other is going to go right here. And then we've got a larger one that's going to go right here. Make sure you have the orientation correct, just like that. Okay, so I'm literally just going to do a nice thin line of glue all the way around. I went a little bit too far out there, that's okay. And just make sure that when you put this down that you are in fact covering the little cutouts. Otherwise it defeats the purpose. And here maybe just throw a little dot right on the crosshair there. Okay, and there we go. I was a little off with my glue, but that's okay. And the last one. Throw that down. Okay, so again, um, it, might be, it might be easier right now to do some of these sections. Again, if you want to pretty this up and hide this so that no one sees the vellum, you can do that at this point. So I'm just gonna show you. We'll do that real quick. Just throw some glue on this guy here. Okay, and literally, best thing to do here is just match it up with the cutouts, the vellum cutouts. And take a look from the other side, make sure that you're not obstructing the actual cutout themselves. Uh, not only is this going to make it look nicer, but it's also going to, um, well, just make it more structurally sound. Okay, and also when you're putting these, when you're putting these um, little panels in place, fold these tabs up. Make sure that they're not, that this piece is not really encroaching over. Um, give me a second here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, just make sure that you're not too far down otherwise, because this tab needs to, needs to sit at a 90 degree angle here. Okay, but anyway, you get the idea. 
and you just glue that in place if you want to hide the vellum so that no one sees it. But again, I'm not worried about that. Totally optional, but it's there should you decide to make it um, more aesthetically pleasing inside. Okay, so we've got our vellum in place. And now at this point, what we can do is we can close this up. So you wanna go ahead and put glue on tab number four. It's the four dashes in the shape of a square or a circle. Okay, and I'm gonna paint that glue out to the very edges. And you should be able to do this flat actually. So we can put this tab down flat, bring this over, it should meet perfectly if we got all our other sections glued down right. Pardon my head there. Okay, close that up. There we go, we can fold it over onto that seam there that we just connected. Give that another press. And there we have it. Move that out of the way. We've got our three tabs here. We're gonna to need to apply glue to all three so that we can close this thing up. Okay, again, I'm going a little bit heavier on the glue here because I'm gonna be spreading this out to the very edges. No one's really gonna see this either because this is going right on top of our, our base, our platform here in just a moment. So um, it doesn't have to be a work of art, but you do want it to be structurally sound so that it holds its shape. You can already tell that this is start, starting to dry on this side here. That's fine. Okay, so kind of like we did with the little platform, we'll flare these up a little bit and bring this over, bring it down and line it up with the side opposite of this hinge side first. Get it all the way out to the very edge there. Make sure it's centered. And then the rest of it should just kind of fall into place. Okay, there we go. And just run your finger along the perimeter a couple times and then flip her over. You can push down from the inside to help that tab make more contact. There we go. Okay, so now remember, if you are, and actually, well, hold on a second. Let me make sure that this looks good down here because I've got some areas that might need a little touch up. We'll let that set for a second. This piece here, this is your little liner for the inside. Okay. If you don't have that, check your extras folder as it's again, one of those pieces to kind of help pretty up the inside. Should this be a gift that you want to make look really, really polished. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm gonna just take a look at my work here along the sides and I can just tell there that I have a few little areas where my glue just did not do what I wanted it to do. So I'm grabbing my scrap piece of paper here, throwing a little bit of glue on it, and I'm just literally painting that glue right into these little areas where maybe it's not making the best contact and then I'll go ahead and press those down with my finger and give them a little extra attention so that everything looks nice and flush and seamless. There we go, that looks nice. I'll take a look at this side. That side looks good because it was already hinged there. And then I have maybe just one more little area that I wanna to touch up. So just a tiny little bit of glue, just slide it right in there. I'm not even sure if, oh, that worked. I'll take it and I'll press that down. And you know what you could probably even do? I've never done this before. I'm gonna throw a little bit of glue on my X-Acto and use that too. It actually didn't work as well as I thought it would, but it still worked. And one more little section here. I'm just being a perfectionist and actually that's fine, no one's, no one's even gonna see that. Okay, so here's our structure. Now um, this, this section here with the star, this is the front, okay? And we're gonna glue this down onto our base. You wanna make sure that the section with the star 
is facing the front because there's nothing on the back there. Okay, so what we can do at this point is just get our glue on the entire base here and just make sure that you work that glue out to the very edges. I'm gonna do one more nice thicker line of glue around the perimeter so I can paint that glue all the way out like so. So I really want that edge to sit nice and flush. Okay, <clears throat> again, make sure that that star is up in front. Use little guides on your base to help you get that nice and centered. Okay, just give it a little nudge. And there we go. I think I pretty much got it. Beautiful, okay. And just press down on the inside. Give that a few moments to set. And you can really feel that little support piece that we added in there that's helping keep, keep this thing from, uh, from sagging too much. Okay, all right, so that looks good. Our little platform is done. Our box is done, the grass is done. I think we're ready to start putting together the actual structure here. So why don't we do that? Okay, <clears throat> now you're gonna notice something here. You're gonna notice that I ripped some things off of this, okay? And you probably saw at the beginning of the video, well, actually, and you probably just saw a little message indicating to not put your vellum here, because we're actually putting the vellum here, okay? So you can see where I put the vellum here initially, I had to tear that off because it needs to go on the base. Okay, same with this one. I ripped the vellum off there because it actually goes on the base. Same with this one. Got to put the vellum on this piece, not on this piece. Uh, everything else is fine though. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just get, let's get moving here. Um, grab, grab the front, okay, and then pick a side Actually, we'll see here that this is numbered, number one. Find the section labeled number two on the tabs here, okay? And we're gonna start by gluing this to this tab here, and then we'll kind of work our way up as we go. But let's get our glue on tab number one. I'm gonna go easy on the glue here. I don't wanna warp this. Grab that. And I'm gonna pull that glue out to the very edge of this tab. There we go. It can work flat. Get that nice and lined up, but it right up against those score marks. Make sure you got it nice and aligned. Give that a press. Okay, I'm gonna fold this over onto itself. Check my alignment down here. This should all be nice and flush. And it is, okay, there we go. And moving right along here, find piece number three, which is this piece here. And you can see that on this tab here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on this tab here, nice and easy. And let's paint that glue out to the very edge of the tab. Put that down flat, lift this up. And there we go. Beautiful. Oops. Okay, I'll fold this over onto itself. Check our corner there, our edge looks good. Everything looks nice and flush down here, indicating that we lined it up pretty much perfect. Okay, and then this is tab three. You can see uh, this one does not have a marker on it. This is the only one left, so it must be four. Grab your glue and apply it to tab three. And I'm gonna paint that glue out to the very edge. There we go. Put 
that down, get it nice and lined up. There we go. Oops. Yeah, that's good. And press that down into place. Okay. And fold that over onto itself. Check your line down here. That looks nice and lined up. Perfect. Okay. We're rocking here. All right. So let me take a look here. Our barn is really coming together now. All right. We're going to close this up now. I'm going to put glue on this tab here. The only tab that's left on the bottom section. And there we go. I'm going to put a little bit too much glue on there. Get some of that off. Should be able to close this up flat. Yep, look at that. It pops right into place. Make sure it's nice and aligned. If you have some excess glue there, just rub it off while it's still wet. It shouldn't leave a mark. Okay, folding it over onto itself at that seam. Give that a press. There we go. Okay, all right, look at that. Our barn is coming together now. Okay, so next thing here, we can fold this roof back. We're gonna glue the first section of the roof into place onto these tabs here. Okay, so just start, start on this tab here. Whoa. Just grab it however is most comfortable so you don't make a huge mess with the glue. I'm gonna go back on this side here and I am kind of focusing, oh, that's a lot of glue there, overdid it. Get that glue out to the very edge as well. And I'm gonna have some sticky fingers here in a second. Maybe not. The reason my fingers don't get sticky is because if I do get glue on them, I wipe them off on a sponge. And then if I still feel like I have excess glue on my fingers, I just kind of rub my fingers together to get the rest of that off. Okay, so we're gonna pull this up and get that aligned with that first section there. Bring this over here so I can see it better. There we go. Now our roof is gonna, there's another section of the roof that's gonna go on this. So if you are a tad off with your alignment on this, don't worry about it, it's gonna be covered up, but do your best to Get it aligned as accurately as you can. There we go. Okay. So that worked out nicely. And then just go to the next section here. Pull that back. We're going to work on these tabs now. And now also, before you get too far, okay, you want to start on... I'm gonna start on this side, okay? Because the this this side here, we're gonna need to glue that to these tabs. So make sure that when you're putting the when you're gluing the roof to these tabs here, that you're starting on the one that has the tabs, uh, the one that has these tabs here, because this one does not have tabs. You see that? Okay. So I'm gonna go over here to the next layer of tabs or the next section. Right up at the top of the roof and get our glue on there. I'm going to bring that glue out to the very edges on both sides. There we go. And just pull that over, get it lined up, and just press and hold that down for just a moment. And then head on over to the other side. There we go. And just get that nice and aligned. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. I think that should work. All right. And now I'm going to go back here to this side and we're going to start on the first section of the roof, just like we did on the other side. And we're going to put glue on this tab here as well as this one. 
It's a little bit awkward, but not bad. And get that glue out to the very edges. There we go. Pull that down. Move this out of the way so it's easier to get your fingers in there. Just like that. There we go. Move it over to this side. Same thing. Just press that and hold it in place. Give it a second to set. Okay, so that just leaves the top section here. We're gonna close this off. Now when we do this, it'll probably be a good idea to get glue on all four of these tabs now so that we can close it up in one shot. We can always stick our fingers and hands through the bottom. And actually there's probably enough room through the top as well, should we need to. Okay, so let's paint that glue out to the very edges here. Actually, it doesn't matter so much on the top because we're gonna be putting another set of like paneling uh, over this section. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, but we do wanna just make sure that we get this in place as well as this guy. So we get that lined up on that tab up on top as well as that tab on the side. There we go. Perfect. We're building a barn. You can push down from the inside as well. Just make sure that you have it on the correct plane so you don't accidentally crush it. Okay, but that's that. There's our, our barn. Let's take a look and make sure she fits. Beautiful, like a glove. All right, so almost done here. Um, we've got our little roof to put on, and that is really going to, oh yeah, look at that. That is cute. Okay, look at that. Yep, and then we just put the top on um, once we get this all into place. Uh, let's see, yep, it's probably a good order. Order of assembly, yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start... Let's see here, hold on a second. You know what, it might just be easier to get this piece in place right now. Let me do that. No, actually, I take that back. Let's get the roof on. Okay. So this is gonna be easy as far as alignment goes because this hole here is the same exact hole here, so you know where it goes as far as centering. So first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this in stages so that we don't end up dealing with dried up glue and wasting time. Um, I'm gonna put glue on this surface here and this surface here. We'll get it aligned and centered first and foremost, and then we'll do the sections underneath it. Okay, so get your glue on these two sections here, and this is gonna make that roof really sturdy as well. That's good. Okay, this is also a symmetrical piece, so it doesn't matter which side you put it on, but just make sure that you get it nice and centered and that it's nice and flush, nice and flat on that surface. Hold that down. That's a perfect embossing folder for this. It really just looks like, looks like some of the barns you see in my neighborhood. This is gonna be a lovely little piece of decor. Okay, so now we can take this and fold it out of the way and just apply your glue to the side here. Let me see if I can show you, there you go. And you don't even need to worry about getting it all the way out to the edge because the roof extends beyond the edge here. So as long as it's just sitting in place, it's all we really need to worry about. Pop that down, just make sure it's making good contact all the way through. There we go. Perfect. I just get really excited when things start to kind of finally fall into place. Okay, and same thing on the other side. There we go. 
pull that down, push it down, make sure it's making good contact all the way around. There we go. Well, isn't that adorable? Oh yeah, really cool. Okay, so now the last section here, I think we're almost done, yeah, pretty much. We got this piece, we can pop this off because <clears throat> we're gonna need to get our fingers in here. So these tabs here, we're gonna push those in a little bit, not all the way. I'm gonna slide this through and I'm gonna flip this upside down. Now you can see what we need to do here is we need to take these tabs, we need to glue them to the inside of our structure. Okay, so actually let me pull this in a little bit more. Just give it a good, give it a good pull. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of the long tabs here. Um, let me point to it. Let's start with this tab here. I have it folded in and I'm just gonna do a nice thin line of glue. You don't want a lot because you don't want it coming through the seams and getting on the roof. So just a thin little line of glue, and then we're gonna push that up and in, up against the inside of our roof. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. I'll give that a second to set. I gotta really push on it here. There we go. Okay, so you can see that tab there is nice and flat up against the inside now. I'm gonna do this side now. Okay, so this is what it looks like before. We've got the tab facing in, so we can apply glue to it, like so. Just a nice thin line, you don't need a lot. And now, so I don't have to get my hand in there, we're gonna push it up this way, up against the inside, okay? So I'm gonna do that like this, because it's easier. You might not be able to see it right now, but I'll show you in a second. <clears throat> there you go. And you can see how that works. And then same thing with these guys. I'm just gonna fold them in. Okay, you can see them all folded in. And I'm just gonna do a little dot of glue on each one. I'll show you what that looks like here. Okay, and then we're literally just gonna take them and push them up against the inside. Let me see if I can show you that again. Just take it and push it up against the inside of the box or the lid. Okay, let me just do that real quick and I'll show you the end result. And that will make sure that this thing doesn't go anywhere. It's probably it's probably overkill actually. Probably got way more than we need as far as tabs, but this will keep it permanent and going nowhere, okay? So you can see those tabs now are all nice and flush up against the inside. There you have that. And last but not least, we've got our little rooster. And that's gonna go up on top like so. And you can see here, that there are some markers on the bottom of this, and that is to help you with the placement of the glue as well as uh, help you get it in the right spot. So you're gonna put your glue right there, just like that. And literally, I'm gonna hold it like this so I can kinda get an idea. I'll go to the other camera angle so you can, I'm using the little guides to kinda help me with the placement and then it kind of moved around a little bit, but you should be able to eyeball it and get it nice and centered before it starts to set too much. And there we go. I think that looks good. Yep. And I'm just going to press and hold that down just for a few more moments um, so that it gets a good chance to really set. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to keep holding this down because I feel like if I don't, it's just going to pop off. That, that rooster wants to be free, but we can't have that. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So that's it. I'm going to put this on You can see how nice of a, I mean, this is a pretty extravagant looking box, but there she is. Um, I've got some, um, I've got some props from my Lee Max and Department 56 collections that I'm going to add here on this little section. I'm going to throw some, actually, you can see one of them here. Got a little pumpkin that I'm going to throw up here. I got a little hay bale. Um, so I'm going to do that. Just kind of jazz it up however I want. Throw a little tea light in there. And she is ready to go. So 
Anyway, take a look at the final photo, uh, and you can take a look and see what other little embellishments we added to this to jazz it up even more. Uh, but I can't wait to see yours. I got a feeling that this is going to be done up um, a la Halloween, a la Christmas. Uh, it's just a very, a very cute piece of Americana, uh, especially for those of you that live out in the countryside. This is going to be a, a nice little piece of decor for your home. I know it's certainly going on my dining room table um, for my fall decor this year. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment and visit our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit that little bell so that you get notifications anytime we release something new. Uh, and if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it. And so would the almost 22,000 dreamers that inspire us daily. So head on over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Group, uh, or you can go to that URL that popped up there. It'll take you right there. And uh, yeah, join us. Uh, can't wait to see what you come up with. And I, as always, I look forward to crafting with you again.